Hi, I'm Steve Saunders. I'm the founder of Light Reading. Now, in part one of our series, we looked at the making of our test of Cisco's virtualization portfolio. Now we're back to talk about the results with Carsten Rosenhovel, who's the MD of EENTC, an independent test lab. Hey, Carsten, good to see you. Hi, Steve. Pleasure to be here. So, Carsten, tell us uh, what you've been doing with this validation for Cisco. Well, we, we spent quite some time in Cisco labs in San Jose, California recently to evaluate their whole cloud VPN solution, basically from the uh, network layer to the service layer to the cloud applications layer. So, this sounds like it was a unique test. It was definitely unique in, in multiple ways. So certainly it's one of the first, if not the first, independent uh, test of a cloud um, NFV solution from, from a whole end-to-end -end service perspective. And on the second front, it's also a new style of testing that we did. So in the past, business cases were validated by performance, scalability, bandwidth. And now they're validated by ideas, by uh, adapting into open multi-vendor spaces, and adopting open source, and, and whole new paradigms. Yeah, that's completely different from the old pass-fail, bake-off testing that we used to do uh, with you at Light Reading. Um, did that require a different approach uh, when it came to doing the tests with Cisco's portfolio? Absolutely. I mean, it's certainly a more collaborative approach. Uh, it's about exchanging ideas, about understanding solutions. But in the end, of course, the test ha at heart it still remains the same. You know, the vendor presents something, demos something, and we validate it. So yeah. that's the core of it is still the same. And certainly in the future, and quite some time, we'll uh, get back to validating business cases at scale as well, while this was a functional evaluation. What was the biggest challenge involved in doing the test? Well, I'd say surprisingly the biggest challenge was the, the breadth of Cisco solutions. So there are so many modules and components that tie into it on the different layers. We had to be selective and we had to agree with Cisco like what is uh, ready for prime time. There are so many things that Cisco is now bringing out at uh, Mobile World Congress. And uh, we covered, I think, around 50% right. of all of the solutions. What about the other 50? Well, let's see. Uh, let's work for the future, I guess. Yeah, so there's a plan to do more testing? Uh, absolutely, as, as far as we're concerned. I mean, yeah. the NTC is very much involved in NFE testing uh, for many vendors and service providers. We're very active in the Etsy NFE group, so there's yeah. definitely more work in this area. Absolutely. And what about the situation as far as standards go? Um, there seem to be an awful lot of groups and organizations, both de facto and official, working on different standards for virtualization. Does that represent a challenge for, for you? or I, potentially I, for the customers? I think it's a challenge for everybody in the industry to start yeah. with. From the testing perspective, it's wonderful. It's always great when there is innovation. That's uh, where we are and where we like to be. I think um, at the Etsy NFV ISG is at the core of the standardization and yeah. OpenStack, um, Open Daylight and OpenNFV are at the heart of the open source model. So it's great that the two are basically putting pressure on each other and we'll see who will who will work fastest and we'll just follow those guys. Wouldn't it be better if they just work together? Sure, it's different paradigms and they, they yeah. need to find the collaboration model. But yeah. that's what we also see in this test, you know, NetConf and Yang yeah. uh, models were at the heart of operating the uh, devices and, and hardware in, the, in this project and certainly that, that protocol family is standardized, but the yeah. models are not always standardized yet, but still vendors and providers need to move forward. Yeah. I mean, I think that as these technologies are brought to market and made real, uh, that that's the point at which we're going to find out where the complexity comes into play and where potentially there may be issues for customers. I mean, do you agree with that? The fact is virtualization until, really, until you did this test has been very theoretical, hasn't it? It has been very, very theoretical with a lot of ideas floating, a lot of announcements and I think it's great to be able to put, put our hands on the solutions and really see what's working and yeah. what's maybe not working and also to see like how open are the vendors really, you yeah. know, is it just lip service? Yeah. You know, of course open daylight, everything is open, but what does it actually mean? Does it mean you can exchange modules and components yeah. and, and that's a very part of the story. Yeah. How open was Cisco when we were doing the test with them? I think Cisco is, is uh, first aiming to be very open 
and there are limits to be open because of standards not being defined yet. Yeah. Uh, the network services orchestrator, the NSO from uh, TLF acquisition, certainly ties into many solutions, um, many many kinds of different vendors. Um, we actually had a third-party device router in the test, which we also configured using NetConf and the appropriate Yang models. Uh, so there is uh, quite a bit of openness there. Yeah. Well, we were very excited with the result uh, of the test and the report. We thought ENTC did a fantastic job and we were excited about Cisco's involvement. Personally, I'm very excited to see the second half of the test and then also to work with you guys on some multi-vendor uh, test interoperability programs later in the year. But thanks so much for doing such a great job with it, Carsten. Thank you very much, Steve. Thank you. It's a pleasure.